So welcome everybody to the um, Communicator webinar uh, hosted uh, with uh, Dave Rubb from Rubb Associates. Uh, Dave's going to be going over the topic of which social media marketing methods are best for you. And um, just to give you a little background on, on Dave, um, he's a consultancy specialist in evaluation and selection of marketing technologies. He works for some major firms in B2B retail, financial, insurance, telecoms, technology and media. Um, he's also the author of the Marketing Performance Measurement Toolkit, the VEST report, which you might have heard of on B2B marketing automation systems, and the Guide to Customer Data Platforms. And uh, as with any any uh, good person who knows that stuff, he also speaks frequently at many events. And um, if you get a chance, check out his blog at um, customerexperience.matrix. Uh, sorry, customerexperiencematrix.blogspot.com. So without more to do, Dave, I'm going to hand over to you to um, take over the reins presenter and to present the uh, slides and go over the um, webinar. Great. Thank you, Simon. And again, uh, thank everyone for joining us uh, today. So uh, let's jump right in. The social media, I don't think I have to tell anyone here, is a popular channel among business people. We see that uh, it's the second most commonly uh, increased budget uh, in, in this particular study. This uh, study by Adobe done recently, so it's growing quicker than almost anything except for mobile here. We see that it's, uh, uh, well that was the use, this is actually growth. This is, uh, this is a question of uh, how many are either Currently using is the darker bar there, or planning to adopt the lighter bar. So again, uh, number three, but right behind you, know, CRM and email that pretty much everyone uses. So it's popular, it's growing, but it's one of the harder to use. A different survey again, finding that uh, rated about number fifth in effectiveness, well beyond the more popular things like email. So marketers having a bit of a challenge kind of getting value from social and they're also finding that it's among the most difficult of, of social media, of marketing methods to use. Second, second hardest. So second hardest, fifth most effective, not a very good combination I, I, I think. Um, wh why do we have that? Well, you know, it is a puzzlement. As uh, Yul Brynner here in The King and I uh, points out what's going on why do why do people have so many challenges why is it so hard and yet why is it still grow so you have this paradox of this this difficult to use thing that's of questionable effectiveness but yet it's growing faster than anything else so well there are actually quite a few challenges that people face uh, and if you look at these numbers this is another survey uh, done by trust radius uh, we, we find that kind of the top three, they're measuring ROI, tying to activities, and then going down a little more tracking results. A lot of it has to do with measurement. Social is really hard to measure. Then number three there, developing our strategy, that's the one that we're going to really talk about because that's something you can control. Hard to measure is hard to measure. And then as you go down to the bottom there, it's keeping up the networks, integrating the tools, model, those are more executional things. But the one that we're really going to focus on is is how do I build an effective strategy because that's the one that I really can control more than anything else. In terms of goals of social media, what are people trying to accomplish? Well, again, kind of an interesting mix of things. Um, brand awareness, website traffic, which is easy to measure, but what's it mean? Uh, audience reach, share voice. Again, those are, those are really kind of measures that are very hard to keep, translate to actual value. You know, generating lead, driving conversion, driving loyalty, those are much more concrete things. But those are not the primary goals. So one of the reasons that we may see some of these challenges with people thinking that social media is hard and the dubious effectiveness is that they're really trying to use it to do things that are hard to measure. And as we saw, measurement itself is already an issue. So what are the methods that we talk about? Well, that's another issue. There are lots and lots and lots of methods, different kinds of programs that people are using social media for, engagement, analytics, uh, sponsorship, 
customer service, recruitment, a lot of employee things if you look down in the survey. Um, and again, you know, some of these are, many of these are, are kind of hard to measure. I mean, what does social engagement even mean? I mean, I, I can measure how many people share my things, but how do I put a value on that? You know, events are measurable, influencers are kind of measurable. There's a few things on here that are very concretely measurable, but a lot of them, a lot of the methods that we're using are kind of inherently uh, difficult to, again, attach a concrete value to. So what we have is this, really this sort of, this sort of a headache, this is how I feel when I think about all the complexities of social. And my head kind of wants to expose, like, oh, there's all these variables, there's all these techniques, there's all these things that are all hard to measure, and there are different goals, like, ah, you know, I just want to go back and do email because I can push a button and I can get a response. So how do we, how do we make it stop? How do we kind of make social media something that we can manage, that we can do in an orderly way and, and build that strategy in a way that makes sense. Well, what we're arguing today, what we'll present you with today, is a methodology that, that we think uh, addresses that. And essentially what we're saying is you have to take those methods and you have to match them to your objectives. That's really as business people what we do, but it's not just about saying, okay, here's my goal, here are the methods that work to fit that goal because we also have to take into account the resources that we have available. Or I can't pick a method that assumes that I'm going to have massive traffic because I may not have a massive followership. So we have really those three things to balance each other and what we're going to do is we're going to talk today about how we kind of look at the, at the mix of those three things to come up with some reasonable sort of approach to decide what, what, which, which particular approach me methods we're going to use first. And we put them into a simple self-service tool and there's a paper about that and we'll actually walk through the methodology in a few minutes. But let's start first by simply talking about what are, are the methods. There are lots of different things we can do with social media. Uh, and here's at least my take of what a reasonable uh, list would look like. Um, you know, we can use social media just to monitor, we can listen basically watching for posts, maybe responding a little bit on, you know, if somebody makes a comment on a blog or on Twitter or on LinkedIn, and really those are the three for business, more so than say Facebook, uh, that, that are the primary social channels to be worry about. So we can listen, we can respond. The second kind of fundamental thing we might want to do is publicity, which is really about creating content for redistribution by media or other outlets. So that's the famous earned media. Um, so press releases, infographics, videos, content, those sorts of things where you're going to get some professional media person to redistribute what you did. Uh, the third thing we do, of course, is we can publish ourselves, we can create media, but instead of hoping that it gets picked up by some third party, we can just push it out ourselves. Uh, and that's great, again, so long as you have some sort of an audience on your blog or your Twitter page or you YouTube or webinars like this, in fact, for publishing, right? Um, sharing is a very specific method that we use that uh, has to do with putting a button, a sharing button on your email or on your web page or on your blog post to make it easy for recipients to share the content that you've created. So it's not quite the same as publicity where you're expecting uh, other people to put it out there, but you're saying, okay, I'm distributing this content now. I want to make sure that the people who I've uh, distributed it to can themselves share it with their friends. Uh, social bookmarking, this is things like Dig and Stumble Upon, Reddit, Tumblr, uh, where content gets published out there and then the members of those communities uh, decide which content looks exciting and sort of boost it up and say, hey, here's something really worth looking at and this is something that you can influence. It doesn't just happen organically. Uh, influencer campaigns, again, a very specific method, uh, technique that has to do with working with inf influential people who you've identified. So, you know, these are people who a lot of other people listen to, so not quite the media, but well-known bloggers or posters or whatever. Um, and provide them with information, offer them samples, run contests, there's lots of things that people do with influencers to get them to redistribute their methods. And then finally, review sites, 
uh, this is the TripAdvisor or Yelp or the community, uh, you know, the, the uh, you know, consumer market side or Glassdoor having to do with employee or TrustRadius, G2 Cloud. They're actually a large number of business oriented sites where people go and they comment on different vendors and where other people go and look for them. It's a very, uh, very large uh, part of the market right now, very large part of the buying process for many people, so you need to, again, not just sit back and let it happen, but actively monitor what's being written about you and respond to negative comments and encourage happy people to write positive comments. Uh, very, very, actually very important and effective channels, probably not as as, as well, uh, at least as thoroughly used as it should be. So, so this is the range of things, the range of methods that we might use and and the question is which do I do first uh, yeah I could do them all if I had infinite resources uh, but it's not even clear that that I want to do them all because some are more important than others at different places in the buying cycle so what again the question then becomes well what are my goals that I'm trying to accomplish because I want to pick the method that really matches the goals appropriately so what, are, what kind of goals? And these are really just marketing goals, right? This is the classic uh, funnel, you know, the attention, interest, desire, action, choose what you want uh, as whatever your funnel is. Most of us probably would use a slightly more advanced funnel than this one, but basically it's all the same. Walking the, the buyer, the potential buyer through the, the cycle down to the point where they're actually going to make a purchase from us or at least reach out to us and become a lead depending on uh, whether you're just a marketer or if you're trying to manage the whole revenue cycle. Um, but in any event, so it's different things I might want to, I might want to attract attention, just getting people to notice you, to know that you exist uh, without really, you know, being too specific, so buzz if you want. Um, but it's, you know, limited business value, but it's a reasonable objective if you're really not known. You're a brand new company uh, or you have a brand image that maybe uh, you want to kind of soften a bit. Um, second goal, a little more concrete here, is building a reputation. This is not just getting known, but getting people to really understand your identity, the products that you sell, your position in the market, and your corporate personality, if you want to think of, you know, of it in those terms. So it's, it's a more specific message, but still just sort of getting, getting some consciousness in the marketplace of who you are. Very important to recognize that brand exists in the consumer's mind, not in your mind. Um, third, getting a little more specific. Let's generate some traffic now. Yeah, we don't want just people to know who we are, to think nice thoughts about us. We want actually at least to get them to come to our website or to our social media pay or possibly even our, our physical location if I'm, a, if I'm in a business where I actually have uh, bricks and mortar type outlets. Um, so this is a more concrete goal. Now they may or may not know who they are. This is just traffic. The next goal down here, generating leads. This says not only do I want to get people to visit me, I want them to tell me who they are. And I want to make sure that the people are, who are coming are actually the people who I want to sell to their qualified leads. So that means either identify, I attract a lot of people and I figure out who the ones that are really good or I uh, just focus on only getting the good ones to show up in the first place. And it's usually, of course, a bit of a mix of both, but you'll also notice that we're getting much more quantifiable as we get down uh, the funnel here. We can, you know, tension, brand reputation, kind of hard to measure, even harder to attach to business value, traffic, sorry, in between qualified leads, yeah, I know what a lead is worth. I know what I want to pay for a lead or what I'm willing to pay for a lead. So now we get to a much more qualified thing. Nurturing relationships, we've now just taken this big leap and just sort of assume that we've, uh, uh, well, we haven't really assumed we've made a sale, but we've assumed that we know who they are and they're interacting with us and they're either leading up to the sale and building relationship before they make a purchase or they've made a purchase and we're nurturing that ongoing relationship, which leads into retention and growth of customers. Uh, providing customer support, and then just even gathering market intelligence, sort of getting feedback from people. And some place in there, uh, probably under retention and growth, is also the very important one of uh, attracting advocates and getting people, mobilizing your advocates, getting your customers, your happy customers, 
to go out and uh, actually promote your business. Uh, probably should even have its own line here. Um, so, again, very different business goals. You recognize immediately that these are marketing goals. Nothing, nothing peculiar to social media about these, really. This is what any kind of marketing program is probably going to have at least one of these as its objective, and that's an important point to make. Social media is not this thing that's separate from the rest of our marketing. It's one of the tools in our marketing toolkit, and like every other tool in the toolkit, it has a specific purpose, and we want to use it for specific things. So we have to decide as business people, okay, what are my goals from a business perspective, and now how do I use social media to support that, not just use social media sort of as an end in itself. So those are the two things. And the third thing, so how do we relate methods to goals? And the numbers here are highly significant, extremely scientific. Um, what we're saying is certain methods are better suited to certain goals. So if you look at the uh, matrix there and that first little 50 in the upper left, we're saying, okay, if I look at attract, attracting attention, that row there is, if I have a goal of attracting attention, I would say that 50 out of 100 points uh, would be attached to publicity. Publicity is probably the most effective of all my potential methods for attracting attention. And effective, again, these are uh, you know reasonable but not terribly scientific numbers uh, that say, um, you know, so does that mean 50% of my effort should go into publicity, 50% of the dollars would be most effective? Hard to know exactly what it means, but it means something that if I'm going to think of where to put my attention, I'd probably put more of my attention. If I want to attract attention, then publicity is probably the most effective thing. Publishing much less effective, social book marketing, you see that 30 there, almost as effective as publicity uh, as a tool. And similar, that's, so that's how you read that. So what we've done here is we've attempted to quantify, again, in some reasonable but not terribly precise method, of what, what the fit is between a particular goal and a particular technique. So again, just going down, if I want to build brand reputation, well, publishing is probably, and influencers both get 35s, they're probably the two best methods to build brand attention. The other ones have some impact and so on down the line. So that's how you read this chart. And again, don't get too hung up on the numbers because the numbers are really just a sort of a tool uh, that we're going to, we'll see how you use them in a minute. But the point is we've at least tried to say that certain methods are better or worse suited to certain goals. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, all right, so the third thing that we consider is you know, what's the situation? You know, what kind of a mess have we gotten ourselves into here? Because the situation does really determine what we can do. Looking at methods and goals is what I might like to do, right? If my goal, again, going back to that first one was, man, was uh, attention, the publicity is the thing I really want to do, but do I have the right kinds of resources and technology and customer engagement? We'll talk about what that means in a minute that publicity is going to work for me or be cost-effective to me. Um, so when I talk about res the, the situational factors, and again, I apologize for a kind of an ugly term, but it's not just resources, though I, it is partly resources. So resource, how much content do I have? Do I have a lot of content available? Because a lot of social media depends very heavily on a lot of content, uh, and certain techniques like publishing are all about content. So if I don't have a lot of content, there are certain techniques or methods that are hard to use. Uh, quality of content, not just volume, but quality, and they are different and they have slightly different impacts. How much traffic do I have? Again, do I have an existing traffic base? Well, then I can do uh, different kinds of things like, um, uh, you, you know, well, uh, publishing is more effective if I already have a lot of traffic, for example. Do I have the staff to do this thing or to monitor? So if I'm going to do customer support, for example, I really do have to have uh, enough support staff to manage that, and of course budget, because uh, some of these things, if I'm going to be paying influencers or um, paying uh, certain kinds of other things, I have to have the budget to support that. So that's the kind of those kinds of resources. Now, what about technology? Another kind of resource, but you know, do I have the execution tools to actually pu push out these things? Very easy to come by. 
nowadays not really that big a barrier for anyone, but uh, they're not free, and some are better. You know, the, the more sophisticated ones uh, do cost more money, a lot of free simple ones. Uh, do I have the measurement tools to track these things? And what industry am I in? Because some industries simply uh, are more uh, technology oriented than other industries. Uh, and then finally, uh, customer engagement, which also has to do with the, the business that I'm in. Um, uh, certain, th certain industries, certain businesses, people can do search really easily and they can find me and other things it's really hard to find me. Just, just this is very specific about the industry. And am I, am I a local service? So if I'm a restaurant or a a plumber or some sort of a thing where I only, really only service a local service area, there are certain things that I want to focus on, like those local reviews, for example, that are really relevant, and others that, honestly, if I'm a national thing, if I'm an e-commerce site where location makes no difference, I do things a little differently. So there are all these factors that you, that you need to look at uh, that determine which techniques are actually sort of available to you, which ones you can deploy effectively because you actually, uh, uh, they, they fit with what you can do. So here's uh, another um, little matrix. Uh, this one adds down to 100 for technical reasons that <laughs> made sense when we did it. It does actually work properly, trust me. Um, and again, though, so we have the same methods that we had in the previous one, monitoring, publicity, publishing, but now we have all the different kinds of uh, of, of situational factors, the resources, uh, the technology, and the industry, which determine um, what we want to look at and, and, and what we want to do. So, uh, yeah, the, the hope, hopefully this makes sense. Again, don't get too hung up on the numbers, but just to give it a little more concrete, if you look at the very le lower left there, or lower right rather, you see under reviews, we, we have that 40. So, local service is very dependent. Uh, on reviews. Okay, makes sense? Yeah, they are. That's what people look at. They look at the restaurant reviews and so much more than they look at some other kinds of reviews. And, um, uh, you know, again, publicity and content quality kind of go together. If I want to do a lot of publicity, I really have to have a lot of good content quality. So, upper left there, that 50. Uh, very, very important. Uh, publicity is only going to work if I have good content quality. It's going to require a fair amount of budget. To write, to create that content, it create, uh, requires measurement tools. So uh, again, so here's the second matrix that we look at: how we actually use this. Let's sort of do a little worked example. Uh, is we go through and we start with our goals. So in this case, we've said, you know, my really goals here are to generate traffic and to generate qualified leads. So okay, now let me look horizontally across. And I've simply highlighted in case, in this case, the row, the numbers in those rows. So I've highlighted the 40 under monitor, I've highlighted the 10 under publicity, and so on across those two things. And then I've added up only the ones that I've highlighted. So monitoring going down now, the only thing that actually is in the two blue rows is that 40. So I have a total score of 40 in the, in the red highlight below there. Uh, publicity, the only thing is the 10. Uh, publishing, I had the 40 plus the 10 adds up to 50. Sharing, I had the 20 and so on down the line. Uh, so now I have the total of, again, the, the, the methods, the, the point methods for the particular goals that I have. And I take the three highest. I say, okay, uh, monitoring and uh, has a 40, publishing has a 50, reviews have a 40, the other ones are all much lower than that, so monitor, pu publish, and reviews are the three methods that look most useful to me. Now we have the second matrix that's, that relates the resources or the situation to the methods. We only focus on those three methods, so we look at monitoring, publishing, and uh, and, and reviews, and we add up again the numbers in those columns. So under monitoring, we have the 15 for existing traffic, and we have the uh, customer engagement is a 50, and 
I guess what we've decided there is those are the those are the methods that I act. Those are the those are the tools that I have. Yeah, I have an adequate content volume. I don't have a lot of content quality. I have the existing traffic. I don't have much support spec. I don't have much budget. I don't have much technology. I do have a high customer engagement of an industry where customers will actually will will talk about me and pay attention. So again, I've I, I've I've highlighted the column, the rows rather, where I actually have the resources available. And I've made this binary. I said, yes, either you have it or you don't. Of course, in reality, if you want to get much fancier, you could assign fractional points and say, well, I have some support staff, so it's more than zero, but it's less than 25, which is the maximum. But we've, for simplicity here, we've just said, let's just check off the ones that actually I qualify for, and I've said again, I have volume, I have traffic, I have engagement, and we're just going to give ourselves the points on those rows. So I said, okay, under monitor of the three rows that are highlighted in blue, I get the 15 for traffic, I get the 15 for engagement, it adds up to 30. Under publishing, because I'm only looking at the columns that I've decided are methods that are appropriate to my business goals. I have content volume, that's 25. I have existing traffic, that's 10. I have customer engagement, that's 15. That, that adds up to 50. And under reviews, the only thing I have there is the uh, ability to generate qualified leads, which is the force of a 40. So I have those three methods. The highest number is 50, obviously. Um, so the 50, the publishing, is the highest ranked method, and that's the one that I would want to use. So again, hopefully that makes sense. So we've gone through this very methodical, mechanistic, possibly oversimplified <laughs> approach, but at least we've thought about it, you know, in a kind of systematic fashion. It says, okay, given my goals, these are the methods that make sense, given the situation, these are of those methods, the ones that I have the best ability to succeed with. So I'm going to start with publishing. Okay. Um, now, again, that is really oversimplifying, and nothing is ever quite so mechanical. So let's kind of you know dig a little deeper, anyhow, and think, what does it all mean? Well. Certainly, small differences are, are something that, that we can uh, we should, wouldn't pay too much on those. The numbers, the scoring points themselves, are uh, just you, you know kind of approximations, really just based uh, on, on a certain amount of opinion. Um, so a difference of five points anywhere doesn't really matter. Um, on the other hand, methods versus resources or situation, the total score does matter. You know, if you have nothing where they have more than 20 or 30, and, and the reason that yeah, that's why that, that those columns add to 100 down, because 100 would be a perfect score, would be a perfect fit. So a 20 or 30 means you know, more or less we only have 20 or 30 percent of what you need to do this compared to what you'd have in an ideal situation. That would definitely be a concern, whereas if you had something to add it up to you know, 80 or 90, you'd say, wow, that's a really great fit for me. I really have pretty much everything I need for this particular method to work. So the total score does matter. Um, you have to consider the value of what you're doing versus the risk. Remember we said early on the value is really hard to come by, so you're going to have some challenge even figuring out what the value is of succeeding with this particular method, but hopefully you picked a method that matches your goals and you factored value into that decision. Uh, and again, risk, we didn't really explicitly address risk, the lower score probably indicates a lower uh, lower probability of success or a higher risk of failure. Um, but, you know, if you had something where you had kind of low scores on the method versus goal, which is sort of the, the, the fit versus goal, and then you had a, a low score on the, uh, on the method versus resources, you'd say, well, you know, there's some risk here because that, that method versus resource score is pretty low. Uh, and you know, you don't have to do just one. First of all, your res your resources that you create, your content and so on, are going to support multiple methods anyhow, or multiple goals for that matter. Uh, so you're probably going to want to pick two or three anyhow. But hopefully, 
that makes sense. Let's just give you some final thoughts here, sort of parting words. Um, hopefully, no one's actually dying. Um, you know, think about this stuff in long term. You know, social media is going to be around for a while, and hopefully, your business will be around for a while. You know, so you want to make some investments that even if they don't fit the immediate first method you, that you're going to pick, they're going to be useful. You're going to build up a, a library of content. You're going to build up a, a, a audience over time that, that will then later allow you to do more things. So, so plan long term. Plan on, you know, really is investment that's going to produce returns over and over again. And it may mean in part that you pick even your initial program is something that strategically is building resources that it doesn't necessarily I mean the first program is the one that has the highest score because it may just position you uh, to do other things in the longer term. Second thing to bear in mind is your goals are going to change. Right? So we started off with picking goals and you can't not start by picking goals but again bear in mind over time your business is going to grow and your needs are going to change uh, which is another reason to think about different multiple methods. So you know as, as the need arises you sort of have some of the resources in place uh, to, to do different things. Um, uh, third thing you know some resources are more valuable than others right? Some methods support more goals, some resources support more methods. So, so again, having a lot of traffic uh, you know, means that you can do a lot of different things. Uh, so, you know, as, as, so th and again, if you, look, if you look back at, some, at, the, at the earlier tables there, you will see that you know, content in particular, having a lot of content, the resource um, is probably the, 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 the thing there, the content quality uh, the row there, which is not highlighted on this, we see there's 50, 30, 30, 30, lots and lots of things depend on content. So, yes, content really is king, and now you have empirical proof uh, of that proposition. Um, and then finally, you know, just get started, okay? Remember our little friend with his head exploding? Well, he's probably not getting a lot done because he's too busy about his head exploding. But if he doesn't do something, his head is just going to, he's going to just continue to have that headache. Um, you really have to get into it, start doing things. You may make some mistakes. You may find out that you didn't have the resources. You don't get the results. But you have to at least begin and build up some real knowledge base, build up some real um, experience, and, and then see what works. And, and then you have a much clearer picture and then you'll be able to move ahead you know, with, with a much firmer sense of what works for your business. So the, the ultimate message here is that we have this little scoring tool and you know, Simon will email you the paper later that uh, has the table so you can fill them out on your own. Uh, but it's just a starting point. You don't have to follow the recommendations but at least it gives you just a way to clarify your own thinking and then to move ahead and to get away from the head exploding piece to the piece where you're actually doing something useful because the worst thing you can do is nothing at all. So that is my final word of wisdom and uh, Simon, did we scare them all away or, or did uh, they have any questions? You had quite a steady steady uh, attendee list there, uh, Dave. So I'd just like to say um, thank you. Uh, what we'll do now is if, if you want to ask David a, a question, if you submit it in the question box, he and I can um, see them coming through and uh, we can try and uh, respond to a few of them. Uh, we've got a, a good five five minutes or so, so we can get through a few questions if you have any. Uh, David, I can see one from Teresa. Um, she said, uh, it's uh, very useful to organise the work, but how do... How do they go about generating traffic? For example, um, how do how would she allocate those numbers and values as you gave as an example? Do you see that question, Dave? Um, you know, I don't actually see the questions, but I heard what you said. So thank you, Teresa. Uh, how do you go about generating traffic in the first place? Well, there, you know, that's a great question, right? <laughs> there are lots and lots of ways to generate traffic. Um, it's its own art form, right? It, you know, you start with content, but w what I've seen, and I'm sure there are more formal answers other people would give, but just in my own personal experience, um, 
there's a lot of behind the scenes things that people do to really reaching out to influencers in the space, other people who they know have a lot of uh, traffic and saying, you know, I have this blog post, maybe you could mention it, or I'm publishing this book, or I'm doing whatever I'm doing, and, you know, basically leveraging other people who have larger audiences who may have some sort of relationship with their influencers, and sometimes you just have to pay for it, that's okay. Um, and, and, and being very proactive about, you know, really looking at ways of, of finding people who are in the same medium, so if it's blogging, it's other bloggers, if it's Twitter, it's other Twitter people, um, and, you, you know, just really sort of uh, incenting them, one either just through, you know, money or personal relationships or whatever, to sort of get your stuff out there and attract the traffic to you. Then after a while, of course, uh, as, as you publish great content, other people will do that without prompting. They'll say, wow, did you see, you know, Teresa's uh, blog post this week? Or Teresa just, you know, has a terrific Twitter stream. She posts all these really cool links to other things. You should follow her. So it's that sort of a process of uh, building the reputation over time and, and in the earlier stages, uh, um, you know, kind of forcing it a little bit. Hopefully that helps, Teresa. We've also got a question from Louise. She was saying, uh, what, what is the value of sites like Pinterest for the charity sector? Um, what is the value of, of sites like Pinterest for the charity sector? Pinterest is very interesting. And I'm seeing a lot of commercial use of Pinterest, uh, which was um, a bit of a surprise. Uh, I'm actually a very visual person, but Pinterest, I've always thought of, you know, is uh, not a very B2B thing. Uh, now, for the charity sector, uh, specifically, uh, I think Pinterest does still have a, um, maybe I'm just being stereotypical, I've not seen any data on Pinterest's audience. So I assume that Pinterest is a little more female, I think that's a true statement, but I, uh, if anyone has any data out there, um, I don't know. The thing about Pinterest, though, is it's very searchable. Um, there are sites on all kinds of topics, so again, you, what you need to do is you need to search out the sites that are overlapping with your audience's interests, whatever they are, and, and then you find things to post or pin that are interesting, which is a combination of your own content and other people's content. Uh, the Pinterest people that I know who have been successful with it, you know, tell me that what they do is they provide ways for people, you know, they put content out there that they encourage people to pin. Uh, and then the people who pin it, uh, pin it to their own Pinterest pages, and that attracts traffic and it links back to the, uh, the charity in your case. Uh, so it's, again, that very much of a network effect, uh, but it's about getting the, the images pinned out there in as many places as possible, so that they, and having them link back to you, if that helps. Cool. We've, got about, we've got three more coming, Dave, at the moment. So we've got, uh, Paul's asked, um, what do you think are the best social platforms um, from a B2B perspective? Um, well, I, I, again, I, you know, that I have seen plenty of data on. Um, LinkedIn, Pinterest, uh, oddly enough, you, I, I'm, I'm sorry, LinkedIn, Twitter are the two that come up, less so Facebook. YouTube, very, very popular, actually. Shock, I don't, kind of surprises me, but we do see that even for B2B. Um, then you have things like SlideShare, and after that it, it fades off pretty quickly. There's only a handful that are really big. Again, Pinterest, surprisingly, only because I had so ex such low expectations, I do see more Pinterest B2B than I would have expected to. But really LinkedIn and Twitter are the two. Cool, cool. Um, Joe's asked, um, she said, uh, social media is generally thought of as being quite resource heavy, and by that she means people. Uh, rather than uh, budget heavy, uh, like other methods, and she said, "Does the matrix that you produced um, work for budget planning?" Does it work for budget planning? Um, well, I think it will work for budget planning in the sense that um, it would help you to at least decide which method you're going to you want to focus on, and then. Uh, see where you'd want to invest your resources, so just going back to that previous one where, um, you know, in, in this example, you know, we see the content volume and, and traffic generation, and if, if I'm going to do publishing, just to stick with that middle column, I see that 30 under content quality, that's the place where I really am going to have to put more investment in. Again, if you remember how this one worked, the blue rows were ones where we had resources, and the white ones were ones who were lacking resources. Well, if I'm going to do publishing, 
and publishing needs a lot of content quality and it doesn't have much in this case because it's white not pink not blue uh, that's where I want to put my budget so yeah to a certain extent this does tell you kind of where you're going to want to uh, where, where you're going to need to uh, inv invest more uh, so yeah I guess it does you have to charge more for this sign. <laughs> Thanks, we've got we've got two more. Um, so we've got somebody that works in um, marketing in for an insurance broker, and they've asked you what type of content would you recommend they start off to able to generate engagement and build brand recognition. Uh, you know, I'm going to be really snooty and just say content that engages your audience. Uh, I, I mean, uh, you know, insurance brokers specifically, uh, it's I've worked in. Um, uh, assume well. It depends on exactly what we're talking about. Who your audience is, right? Are, is the audience like insurance agents, uh, who you're trying to incent to, you know, sell your product versus some other insurance company's product, or is the audience the consumers? Let's assume, for sake of argument, since we're B two B, it's the insurance agents. Well, now what are the insurance agents interested in? You know, they actually often do want things that they can hand on to their own clients, but they also are interested in things, you know, about how to be a better insurance agent and, and so on. So it, it's very much something where you have to put yourself in the shoes uh, of your audience and say, well, you know, what are these guys um, going to find of interesting that they're going to they're going to read from me or want to get from me? Um, you know, that's why we do webinars like this for people like Simon, right? So here's we think a tool that we think will be of interest to those of you who are attending so that it's 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 just like that and of course uh, uh, you know it's good to have come up with fresh ideas not just do the same that everybody else is doing and Dave do you have, do you have an opinion if it is consumers uh, you mean what would I send to consumers as opposed to brokers yeah, agents? yeah. Uh, consumers often need more basic kind of education um, uh, I mean, insurance is still a. It, either they have the sense that it's a total commodity. You know, yes, I need homeowners insurance. Yes, I need car insurance. They're all the same, whatever. So you want to give them something that educates them a little about the buying process. Maybe if you're really clever, find a way to sort of introduce uh, a, 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 a bit of fear. That's not really quite the right word, but an indication that they need to think about it a little harder. They might need to reconsider because they probably already have insurance, so you probably are needing to convince somebody to switch as opposed to just make their first purchase. You know, I may be buying my first, um, I don't know, home, uh, but I probably not buy my first insurance. Um, so it's a slightly different need uh, for the consumer, again, depending on your product and so on, and, you know, honestly, depending on your brand, are you a low-cost brand, are you a high-service brand, you want to produce material that will both support that brand position and convince people, of course, that that's the right kind of person, company to buy from. Excellent. Um, David, we've got a couple more if you've got about another five minutes. I'm not quite sure how strapped you are for time. Uh, no, I'm fine. I'm okay. good to the top. Okay. Um, thank you for that, Connie. Uh, we've got one from James. He's saying um, he wants to know what your opinion is on social or using social media in kind of less social industry. So he works... Um, in civil engineering for remedial works and uh, he's kind of, he, he's kind of done some primary research in that he asked the engineers in his office um, what they engage in and they kind of say they don't um, uh, and he was wondering whether you still think there is value to companies to, to use social who work in those kind of environments well I would honestly push back a little against that I, you know the surveys that we see I was just looking at one this morning you know and part use of social media somewhere in your life basically uh, you know it's up in the 70s 80s 90s percentage of the population using these things so uh, you know we could we could have some really nasty stereotypes about social you know engineers all being antisocial and stuff but chances are they're at least doing some now. Maybe it's not their. Maybe they don't even think about it as social media. You know, people about often talk about you know the opinions of peers and people like me, colleagues and stuff. And they don't think about that as social media, but of course that is where you get a lot of information. 
hard to imagine anybody today not getting a handful of email newsletters every day and often the content in those newsletters is aggregated from social media so I, I would probe a bit deeper uh, before I gave up but you know that being said again part of the whole point of all these matrices is there are some methods that are more useful than others and uh, there are some situations where there are other channels. Remember, we looked early on. Social media is just one of many things. There's, you know, email and uh, and all the other uh, marketing methods. I'm just flipping back in my printed copy here. Um, you know, mobile, social, uh, web uh, content management, chat, marketing automation, which boils down to email. There are lots of other ways to advance. Lots of ways to reach people that are not social. So it may be that social, just in your case, isn't uh, the highest priority. That's okay. Excellent. Um, I've got we've got another one along that that line. Paul's asked, uh, "Can you think of an industry that social media doesn't really work for? Have you ever come across <laughs> one where it's not been any good?" Um, well, again, personally, no. I, I just see uh, you know I'm a very my, my world is my world. I mean. Even we run into now, uh, what we do see is that different social channels apply more to different people. We're, we're dealing with a, a client, a retail client right now, um, where they say that for different product lines, some they sell to older people and some to younger people, and the older people uh, are much more Facebook oriented, and the younger people kind of wouldn't be caught dead on Facebook because that's what grandma uses to watch the grandkids uh, so the, the the moms in that scenario are more on Instagram or Pinterest or so on so you do have to bear in mind that there are different social media for different folks but I again I just think that uh, social media is so broad covers so many things this just how we get information more and more and more uh, it's, it's hard to uh, hard to think of a situation where it's going to be totally irrelevant Cool. And uh, from from your experience, David, do you do you think um, kind of sales based content uh, for a B two B sector or information based content would work better? Well, y you know that gets back to the question of methods and uh, or uh, not so, is it methods or is it goals? Um, you know there are things specifically. There is this notion of social CRM, which is really a sales thing. Uh, which I mean, part of it is just sort of lurking out there and seeing somebody types in, oh, "I'm looking for marketing automation. What should I use?" You know, and the sales people jump on them. That's you know, kind of a worse practice. Uh, but building relationships with people through social, and they're not necessarily one-on-one -on -one relationships. They but they're just pumping out uh, content that's appropriate to the person's buying stage. You know, any given moment, most people are in an early stage of the buying cycle. Only a handful full of people are actively buying anything at any given point in time, right? So most people are going to be looking for more general information, but then if someone does raise their hand through social to indicate that they're deeper in a buying cycle, then it's totally appropriate to send them sales-oriented information. Perfect. And we have the last one. Um, somebody, uh, Kazan Fischau, has asked, and we normally get this quite a lot, actually, um, what type of measurement tools are out there that you can use to measure social media and the monitor the effectiveness of it? Have you, have, have you got like your, your top three that you, you come across? Um, you know, I don't have a list of specific tools to offer you. They all have analytics. You know, you can... Twitter will give you, they all, they all will give you the basic analytics. Um, you know, people use things like Hootsuite a lot, it's a very popular one, for example, uh, that will give you stats on shares and stuff like that. Um, again, you know, social media analytics, it's, 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 it's easy and stuff. It's easy to get very simple statistics like a you know, number of followers, number of shares, and so on. Relating that to financial value is really tough. And I think it's more a matter of, um, you know, building a model to, to connect them and gathering the data than it is uh, about plugging in the right tool, because the tools can only do so much. So, it's uh, measurement's a whole other world. I, different topic, I'm afraid. So I, I, I would say I would, I would I would do the basic measurements that are in my 
my, you know, my, my basic social media tools, and then you need to look over in, this, in your CRM system and see how many social media generated leads uh, or how many social media influence leads are converting into sales, and that's the measure you really care about. Sure. Thank you. Um, I, just to add to that, I would say I, definitely the, the main one that I I come across is is Hootsuite. Um, and obviously for the, the the shameless plug, if you like, um, Communicator has a platform called Gator Social, which if you go on the website and have a look, you'll get a bit more information. So we have one last question uh, from Paul, and he's asked, um, would you deem businesses who show banter on social media to be a no-no? I'm not too sure what Paul is kind of determining banter other than probably jovial comments and remarks but um, yes would you consider it to be a no-no or to show more of a human side if you like to, to your social media presence uh, I have no problem with showing a human side and yeah I, I would interpret that question to mean that as well um, uh, you know these are people uh, who are who are on both sides of that and, and you, you need to acknowledge that and, and it's so yeah, I don't, I don't have. I mean, problem with banter, of course, one person's banter is another person's uh, idiocy, right? So you have to <laughs> make sure that you're not. You, you may think it's hilarious. There are many things I think are hilarious that everybody else looks at me like, why did you say that? So I tend to uh, to err on the side of being quiet. But uh, I think a certain amount of banter is just fine. Excellent. All right, that brings us uh, to the end. Sorry to have to to, to wrap it up. Um, that's all, all the questions, and um, so I hope everybody got something out of that, and um, we will definitely send you a copy of the slides, the webinar um, itself, and Dave just flicked onto a new screen. We've got the, the white paper that accompanies this, so you can uh, read it a little bit more at your leisure and go through the matrices that Dave's put together on there, and um, hopefully give yourself a, a little better steering of, of what of what methods and what um, uh, I think they've called them situations uh, that you can go, go ahead and use because um, what we find with most of our customers is that they just don't know where to start or if they have started they've just got a, a mass of things that they're trying to cover with in social media so hopefully this will give you a, a good focus point for the, at least three to six months ahead before you go back and reconsider what it is you want to do or if any of your goals change. Um, Dave, I don't know if there's anything else you want to sign off with, um, other than obviously, Dave Rab, please go check his um, his website out and his documents. There's some great resources on there. Um, otherwise, if Dave doesn't have anything else, I will say thank you to everybody. Um, Dave, do you have anything else at all? I don't know, just again, thank everyone for attending and uh, hope it was useful. And by all means, take a look at the paper when Simon sends it to you. Yes, D. Sorry, just to, just to confirm, D. We will be sending out the paper to everybody. If you want it before you before I get to um, hitting the send button as such, if you go onto the Communicator website under the resources section, you'll see this paper listed there. You you can get it right now rather than waiting for me to to get the um the the paper out to you. Thank you very much, everyone. Hope you have a good um good afternoon and uh, speak to you again soon. Hopefully for the next webinar.